Hey guys. <laughs> hey, 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 Vinny here. You were just talking to me. It's I Mayme. Know. It's Mayme and her sidekick. Vinny, Vinny. It was funny because he was like, I've never done this from this, blah, blah, blah. Today on our show, if you are watching in the replay, I'll let you know, we're going to be doing um, triple cut, co three color embossing. And no, I, we're Sorry. not, oh, I thought we were. Yeah, I thought like, no, we're not doing that. No, we're doing three color embossing today and look how pretty this is. So this is the stamp set that Mandy did and I think it is gorgeous. And we couldn't wait to show you what we had in mind when we designed it because you really don't see that when you look at the set itself, which is gorgeous anyway. But when we did this, we had seen a picture somewhere where they had like all of the swirling like celestial looking stuff and I thought this would be so cool if we could do it in a stamp set. So we did. And yesterday I practiced this and this came out awesome. But I have to tell you something and I think this is amazing. I want to show you this. So I had a subscriber who sent me this and what this is is a glass tile that she got at the home improvement store I think she said. And these are like little glass pieces as well like just a glass um, rectangle and this is one of those like pearlescent color glass tiles, you know what I'm talking about? She siliconed all of that together to make a handle, right? So after I finished heat embossing with all these layers yesterday, it was pretty warped, as you can imagine, right? So what I did was I went ahead and I assembled my card. I even glued everything down, did everything, and then I took this piece and put on top of it, but this would work with anything, a book, anything. You could use anything you want to do, but I thought this was really cool because I could still see through it. I thought that was neat, so if you guys want to make one of these for yourself, but after you finish, if you'll just put something heavy on it and let it sit, I let mine sit overnight, and when I came in today, it was so flat and so smooth. Just look. That is so nice because these normally warp so bad. So that's my warping tip for you guys. Um, even And if you're worried about putting like a book on or something, just put acrylic blocks on it and then set something heavy and let it sit all night. And it is so flat now. You'll see as we go today, it's going to warp because we're going to put a lot of heat on it. All right, so there's that. Now then, let's get started. Do you want to say hello, Ben? Well, I'm trying to, but I'm trying to get some, I'm trying to figure out because of the, I'm not. The chat's not working. Are you struggling? Oh my bad. Let's see. Can I help you? you might can. Let me just see if I can help you out. Let's see. Probably, I think it's because the way you get there. You always go that way, and I always go this way. Give us one second. I'm going to get him where he needs to be real quick for his chat. I don't know why it is, but the way you go, sometimes I go from does online, that. not from... Yeah, the app works. Dun, 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 dun. Sing a song or something. Sing a song. <laughs> there it is. Thank you very much. You might have to mute it unless you already did. All right. So, I went ahead. This is my um, card base. This is an A2 size card. I'm using my trio pack, the paper that I did with Christopher um, of Brutus Monroe. This is the white from there, and this is the black. And I think this one is called Alabaster, and this one is called Raven. So, that's the ones I'm using. And I took this full sheet of Raven paper, and I went ahead and cut it into four because I can make four of this card, but also if I mess up live on camera, I have backups. That was really the reason for it. So I'm gonna put this aside for a second. We'll get back to that in a minute because I wanna start working on this dude. Heat embossing, much like glitter is my nemesis. Mm. It is, I do not enjoy heat embossing. I think it's beautiful when it's done but it's like glitter to me. It goes everywhere, it makes a mess. You can tell I've already had to scrub my work surface and it's still a little bit yucky. I don't like it, but I think the, pro I think the product you get is gorgeous. So this is a piece of copy paper from behind to help me pour this back into my bottle when we get there, okay? So you're saying <clears throat> in this particular instance, the suffering is worse. It's for, the, for everyone else, it's for that beautiful card. I, and today, I want to tell y'all something. I've not even shown these. We've had these for a while. Actually, I think we sold out of them once and they've already come back. These are the Nouveau Fine Detail. This is not the one I showed you guys last year, which were the chunky, glittery ones. This is the Fine Detail. And the big difference in these and the other, like if you're buying these for your stash, they look real similar, don't they? See how similar the bottles look? But you can tell here, the fine detail is kind of a rounded off square, and this one is round. So if you get these in your collection and you want to know how to tell them apart without reading them, this, the shape lets you know. So this is the fine detail. The three colors we're using today are Copper Blush, Classic Silver, and 
classic gold, but we also have them in three other colors. I'm gonna tell you super fast. Jet black, crystal clear, and glacier white. Did so, we have that in stock? We do. We, and, this <laughs> we do. And some of the names are the same as the other product. Make sure you look for the Nuvo fine detail if you want these. For me, this stamp set works better with the fine detail. Okay, here we go. This Much is prettier, Joan, he said. this is my embossing powder. What are they called? Inky dinky do. Yeah, but they're called something like that. Powder powder bag something. I call it a pillow. This is my embossing pillow, <laughs> and I'm gonna go ahead and pat this all over. Now we're gonna talk embossing. Vince, why do you think we do this? Because you don't know nothing about embossing. I don't you? know squat about it. All right, so why do you think I do this first? Well, the powder would make it less sticky. I, that's very good. What happens is when the, we touch the cards with the oils from our fingers or if there's liquid in the air and really bad in Alabama, the humidity, anything on the page, when you sprinkle this stuff on, it'll stick even to static. Okay. So like you try to keep that down by doing this. Now you can use a dryer sheet. So if you have a dryer sheet at home, you don't have one of these dudes, just use your little dryer sheet, rub over it real good. I don't have the greatest look with that. I actually have great luck with this one because I can powder it for real. Well, it makes so. better sense because even if you use the dryer sheet, the static and the stuff is going to come right back as soon as you take it off. Yeah, but it, where the powder stays. Yeah, the powder stays, but we're probably going to powder it several times because we're going to multi. We're going to multi do. Okay, so and just so you know, normally you would do one color because you're going to heat it. So you want to be kind of careful. So we're going to do three colors. Okay, this is that Swervy stamp, and I do not want to get, let me tell you something, okay? Do not get your embossing powder on the backs of your stamps. This, um, what is this? What I just said, the powder, the powder. like the, the embossing buddy, somebody reminded me, powder. Don't get that on the back of your stamps, and don't get your embossing powder on it, because it'll mess with the stickiness of them. So keep them away from each other, okay? This is one of my little Fiskars presses. This is that swervy, swervy stamp from the set. Here's how I put it on. That's from, from, from Wonder. Wonder. And I don't really care. I just want it on there. See? So the swerve stays. I just laid it on there. Okay? So I'm going to start with this guy. And do I want to make it just like... I'm going to make it just like this one. So the first color I used was copper. I think the copper is so pretty. This is Versamark ink. It is a clear ink. You have always wondered the difference in these inks. Well, I have learned that that one is clear and you use it when you want to stick something to it. That's right. It's not a glue, but it's a sticky ink that stays wet and allows this to stick to it when we get to that part. So this press, I love this Fiskars press because it has these little feet on the ends. So I can line this up where I want it before I ever press it down on the card. I'm going to come down a little lower. Oh, I'm doing it opposite of the other one. That'll be cool. We'll see what it looks like. And then once I get it where I want it, I can press it into place and get that image on. And I work it really hard like I don't just kind of tap it you see and you can see that line on there really good right okay so the first color we're gonna use is copper what I call it copper blush kind of mm. pretty kind of pretty all right then and let me give you another tip because now y'all know I don't do this when the camera's not on when the camera's not on I just burn my fingers <laughs> it's a trick. but if the camera's on and you don't want to burn your finger use your little holdy dudes what are they called Twizers. Twizers. Use your twizers. No, they're tweezers. But one time when Vince was labeling things in the store, he labeled them twizers. And ever since then, we called them twizers. It's my fine spelling ability. <laughs> so I did it once and I let it fall off. The other thing I did was come back one more time and do it one more time. Don't worry about how much we're pouring out. That's all going back into the bottle. No big deal. And see, I think I get a really good stick when I do it twice. I'm going to sit this over here. Watch this. Now, some people don't mind this because they feel like it just cleans right up. And I'm trying to be real clean today because I don't like the mess it makes on my counter. So, I'm going to take this and just pour it back into the bottle. Now, I want to show you something. The difference in this and your regular. Can you see the fine grit that's left on this page? That's how fine this um, embossing powder is. It's a very nice, fine embossing powder. And why is fine embossing powder important? Because if you're doing something very detailed, then a fine embossing powder um, sticks to the details better. Another thing I like to do, which I didn't do, I sometimes will like powder these because it'll think it'll make things fall off easier too when we okay. get to that point. Ever seen this used, Vinny? Yep. For for it's not a blow dryer. 
I know. I've seen you do this part. <laughs> yeah, this is kind of, I think you have seen this before. Okay, so this is my heat tool. Here's the trick with a heat tool. First off, it's going to be loud, guys. You guys ask me about heat embossing all the time, so you're going to see it in real time, in real life. It's going to be a little loud. You want to turn this on and let it heat up for a second to get hot. So don't go straight to your page. If it's not hot and you go straight to your page, it's just gonna blow your um, powder away. I'm gonna let that heat up. The other thing is this. You cannot use a blow dryer. A blow dryer does not have specifically pointed hot enough air, but there are all kinds of heat embossing tools out there. This just happens to be the one that I like. Actually, my friend Christopher introduced me to it. Now, I'm not going to heat this. I'm not going to overheat this. I am just going to melt it because we're going to heat it multiple times. So I'm just going to melt it. And I'm not holding it over my mat because it'll warp my mat. So I'm holding it in the air and I'm going to hit it with the heat. And like I said, I just want to melt it. I do not care for it to be like perfect, perfect because it's going to get hit with heat several times. Just get that melted. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on it. But you can see how that melted, and now it's got the pretty sheen. But you see how it's a little grainy? As I go, that will level, that'll level out some more, too, because it's going to keep getting heat. All right? So now, let's do it again. I've touched this thing. I've played with it. I'm going to powder it again. And this time, I'm going to do the, the straighter line. I've already put them on blocks for myself. Here's my straighter line. And I'm gonna put it on here. We'll get to go faster as we go. I wanna tell you all the details before um, before we, you know, I don't wanna miss all the details. All right, so I've inked this up. Now, my head may get in the way for a second. I wanna get this where I want it. And you decide how you want it to land. I think it's pretty when it's kind of overlapping. I can't decide, I think this way. This is not, this one that I'm using now is not the press. This is just a block, but it works just fine. Pick that up. So now I've got that line. And this one I'm going to do in gold because I think the stars have to be silver, right? It makes sense. I think so. All right. So I'm going to do this number right here. Ooh. Pounce, pounce, pounce. And remember, I do it once and then I'm going to go back and do it again. Now, remember how I told you that you're going to add heat to this multiple times? Each one of these, because we're multiple heat doing, what's the word for this? Because we're putting the heat on it so many times, that's why I'm not worried about melting it to like to this perfect smooth finish. It's going to keep getting heat. It's kind of like if you're doing a layered HTV shirt, like with heat transfer vinyl. You know how the first layer you don't like overheat because you know you're going to add another layer and another and keep adding the heat to it? That's why. Does it make sense? Yep. Okay. If it makes sense to you, it'll make it sense makes to them. Sense to the long me. Okay, so back to the twizes. Back to the twizes here. And back to our heat tool. Let it warm up. Yep. It'll warm up faster this time too because it's I already had it on. Mm -hmm. So I'll be able to do it like this. And see how even though I don't mean to, that heat is still touching the other one. So I'm just gonna run through and melt it. And at the end. I will really do a last melting shot. It'll be perfect. Okay. Now, if you're real froggy, you probably could do, like, do you see how on this one, I have, like, multiple colors up here, too? If you're real froggy, you could probably do all your silver, all your gold, all your copper at one time, but I ain't that froggy, okay? So, <laughs> I'm doing one color at a time. So, now it's time to do stars, which are my favorite part of the whole process. So, I just powdered that one more time. And honestly, this is not a card I would do in mass production. This is one of those when you've got some time and you've got somebody specific you want to make a really pretty card for. This is one that I would just sit down and play and have a good time with. Um, anybody that's a card maker probably would agree with that, that this is not one for um, mass production. All right, so I've laid my stars just in a pretty spot. <laughs> Somebody laughing about froggy. They don't get froggy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That must be a southern thing. We get froggy in the south a lot, and it can get us in a lot of trouble. <laughs> okay, now then, silver, which is so pretty. I love the silver. The only trouble I have with this is forgetting to use my embossing buddy in between. It really does matter because you kind of can just get going and not think about it, and then you end up with these stray embossed, embossed sprinkles everywhere, which actually on this card, it looks really pretty, so... 
All right, I'm gonna do this one more time. I think it looks better when I go back over it twice. Could just be me, but it looks better to me. All right, let's pick this up. <laughs> Christina knows froggy, getting froggy can get you in trouble. Cause she's from the south. She knows, she's from my neck of the woods. She knows what happens when we get froggy. <laughs> you don't say anything about getting froggy then? I'm not touching it. <laughs> I just can't believe Amanda's not laughing. <laughs> She's out there getting froggy. She's busy. Okay, so back to the tweezers. Back to the heat. I love how this turns out. I think it's gorgeous. Now here again, I'm not gonna do anything but just melt it. I'm not trying to spend a lot of time on it. I just want the powder to melt so I can come back again. Cause remember, I'm still gonna do my sentiment layer too. <laughs> what on earth is froggy? Uh, anything. You can be jumpy. You can be sad. You can be mad. Be like, oh, she got froggy. I don't know where that comes from. We just say it, don't we? You get froggy with me all the time. I, I have been known to do that. <laughs> it's whatever. It's one of those things that it's whatever you say, right? Okay. So now I'm going to do the word wonder, which I think is beautiful. Beautiful. All right. So this one I put sideways on a block. And I think I'm gonna do it a little angled this time. I didn't on the last one, it's pretty either way. Let's just angle it up. Just for kicks and giggles. Okay, look at that, isn't that pretty? Well, you can kind of see it. See it on there? It's pretty. All right, I did this in gold. I think I'll stick to what I did earlier. <laughs> What did she say? When we're all mad, we tell someone, oh yeah, if you feel froggy, jump. That's what we say. Is that's that where I got it from? Fight. Yeah, that's when it's going to be a fight. If you feel froggy, jump. All right. Or if you watch Smoking the Bandit. Did he say that? Uh, he said that to, uh, Burt Reynolds said it to Sally Fields. I didn't know that. I promise I didn't. I don't think he meant it quite the same way. You feel froggy. He wanted to fight, but. Yeah, because froggy, it can mean all kinds of different things. All right, now then, let's do this one. See, it's a little time consuming, but wow, the end result is gorgeous. Or at least I think it is. Do you think it is, Vin? He did call her frog. Now, I don't have to worry about the bottom. I'm not going to be down there much. I'm going to be up here. My gun is plenty hot enough. Or my heat tool, heat gun, whatever you call it. Okay, let's, uh, Chris Wilson asks, I don't understand the heat gun. What is the purpose? It melts the powder and turns it into that liquid form. See how shiny and pretty that gets? It melts that powder. It is so nice. So if you're new here, heat embossing. You put down some powder so that you don't stick your, so your embossing powder doesn't stick where you don't want it to. And then you ink up with a watermark ink pad. This one's a Versamark one. And I'm gonna do the word celebrate celebrating and I'm gonna put it right here because I did this one at an angle this time and this time I am gonna do two stamps at once because I'm doing both celebrating the in silver both of these words so ooh, can I get the same angle probably not don't hate me if I don't I'll be close but it won't be perfect all right and then I'm gonna pour some what color silver I'm going to pour silver on here and I'm gonna tell you why this is great. I saw somebody say you can use glitter. Well, I would not use glitter because y'all know how I feel about glitter, which glitter is my number one nemesis. This is my second. But the reason I wouldn't use glitter is because as a person who doesn't like glitter, I also don't like to receive glitter in the mail. I do not like it because it goes everywhere, right? So this gives you shimmer and shine without loose glitter. And you can get this with a glitter in it, but it still has a little glitter fallout. But, because I'm not a glitter fan. Marie asked, can I overheat or can it overheat or burn the product? It can. That is why I'm telling you, just melt it. Don't stay on it too long. Just melt it. At the very end, when we're done, we'll go back and we'll heat it one good time everywhere. But really, it's working. It's doing just fine. I don't need my tweezers this time because I put my hand way away. And no, the glitter doesn't melt. Somebody said glitter doesn't melt. It doesn't. And see how I'm kind of, the heat is layering as well. Look how pretty that what's is. What's so cool to me is you can you can literally see it changing colors yeah. uh, on camera as it... It goes from dull to shine to smooth. Isn't that beautiful? I've got one more that I do on this page. 
on the front. And that is, I took the tiny stars from the set and I kind of clustered them here. And I want to tiny star around here. I think it's pretty and it just kind of gives it even more. I don't know. This one was a fun one. See, sometimes when we design stamp sets, which is so funny, we have in our head, I'm going to say all the time when we design stamp sets, we have in our head kind of at least the way we want to take the, the set. And this was one of those things that we had already thought about when we were putting it together. Like, this would be beautiful to do all the embossing. But I want to tell you something that I think you can do just the same. And that is multiple colors of ink. You don't have to emboss it. Use multiple colors of ink and you'll get another beautiful look. I think you will. These stars I did in copper because I thought the copper was so pretty. I love the copper color. It's kind of bronze too. If you're looking for a bronze, I think you could get away with it for both of those colors. And this is where the fine detail comes in because those stars don't lose their points, which is important. Oh, I want to show you something. Let me see if it goes away. Yeah, kind of. So I got a little bit right here that I don't want it right there. You can use a paintbrush and pull that off. Or if you can get it with your fingers, you know, without disturbing any of the other, you can just kind of knock it away if you can see any of the powder where you don't want it. That's ready to heat. Let's put this back in here. And how are we doing on time? Um, 12.22, so 22 minutes in. Okay. All right, I'm going to move this aside. You probably aside. can go a little over because, you know, it took us a few minutes to get kids Oh, started. that's true, we did. I'm going to close this up. And here we go. Let's melt. At this point, we can do our final melt because this is everything that's going on the top. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to heat up those stars. Get to those first. Get everything melted together. And then I'm just going to do a final run through. Just like this. You can overdo it. But I just want, because I didn't hit everything, you know, 100%. And I'm just kind of settling it all out. Another thing to keep warping down is to do the back as well. I think you it's really back, nice. You mean like heat the back? Heat the back. Just to let the heat run through too, and it'll help you with the warping. Just look how gorgeous that is. Isn't that beautiful? All right. So that is the outside of our card. Now I have got to clean this because I cannot handle it. I cannot handle the powder that is everywhere. So let me do that real quick. And I'm going to show you something else. Y'all probably won't believe that I did, but I did do it. <laughs> and it worked. And people were like, what? Okay. So clean this off. And you know how we put the embossing powder on here. Oh, this is gonna make people freak out. Are you ready for that? I'm gonna dry this a little bit. Oh, my work surface here. Man, it. That's going pretty quick. Okay, I did this. I took this wet wipe and I rubbed over it because I really wanted all that powder off. And it's gonna be fine. Don't worry, I'm not saturating it, I promise. I'm just cleaning it because I think it's beautiful like that. I love this. I think it looks so good. Okay, then I don't think I'm going to do this today because it takes a lot of time and we're, we're pretty close. But do you see the edge of this card, how it's done in the silver? What I did on this one was I just used my Versamark ink pad and I just rubbed it down. It? Mm -hmm. I just rubbed it down, patted it on, and then I used the silver and embossed the edge so that my card would look exactly the same you know, my embossing powder would look the same. But I'm not gonna do that today for time's sake. It's real simple. You don't have to do anything to be pretty there. But I have some glitter paper, because y'all know I'm not scared of this. See, this, this is something that I have that has glitter built on. I'm gonna put that down around it. I think that'll be pretty too. So let me cut a piece of this real quick to mat on there. Um, plus, I wanna show you how you can mix your stuff up. If you have all this stuff in your collection, use it. So that card is a four and a quarter by five and a half. And I cut that piece four by five and a quarter. So I'm going to do this one just a little bit wider. I'm going to do this one at four and one eighth. And I'm going to do it five and what was this one? I already No, I got it right. Okay. And this one is, so I need to do this one five and three eighths. All right. So just an eighth of an inch larger than my piece, but an eighth of an inch smaller than my card base. Let that sink in. It'll make sense in a minute. <laughs> that was a tough one. Okay. Here we go. And I used some foam tape because I wanted to pop it up. So, all right, any Does questions? Does it matter what color paper you do this on? Does it have to be done on black? No, I just think it's, I just think those colors were really pretty on black. You can do it on any color paper. 
Like Sonia said, how can this be done on a base other than black? I mean, you, yeah, any color. Put a different color paper on it, right? Yeah, and change up your embossing powder colors. Like if you don't want to use the copper and the gold and the black or whatever, I mean, in the silver, use the other colors. You can emboss on any color paper. Sure enough. I just think it looks pretty on black. I thought that was a pretty, um, I think it would be gorgeous on navy. I think it would be absolutely pretty. I should have done it on navy for this video to do a different one, but I didn't think about that. That would have made sense, wouldn't it? To mix it up. It could have been. Yeah, can't you imagine it on navy? Like, um, gosh, it, it would so look pretty. more like, well, I don't know. Like the night sky. But I mean, black, yeah, does, but too. black does too. Yeah. All right, then. I'm going to glue this down. I'm going to foam tape this down. Why is my paper sticking? All right. And I'm going to have just a little edge of that silver sticking out all the way around. Now, that probably freaks some people out that I just covered up all that glitter in the middle. If it does, then you just cut that glitter out and use it on something else. You just do your thing. But look at that pretty shimmer on the edge. Oh, that's so pretty. It's dancing. See it dancing in the light? Pretty, pretty. All right. This, I'm going to glue to the top of this like that. I don't think I want to do it on white now. Maybe I want to do it on black. What happens if I do that? Let me see. Because I think that silver looks like, oh, wow, look at that. Should I do that instead? Should I put it on a black card base? That's pretty sweet. That's pretty, isn't it? Oh, well, I'm going to do it on a black card base. I think that's much prettier. <laughs> Sometimes you just got to step outside and go, nah, we're going to do it this way today. Bling it on people said to tell you that they love you. Aw, oh, thank you. Dearly. Thank you so much. They have to go and clean the fridge. Oh, <laughs> who's cleaning the fridge? Uh, that person was bling it on people. Bling it on people. Would you come clean my fridge? That'd be awesome. She needs to come clean Vinny's fridge. Four and a quarter. That's the truth. That is the truth. And this is an eight and a half by 11 piece of paper. So when I fold it in half, it will be right. Let's score it. Do y'all know what right means? It will be right. Did they say they love you too, Vinny? Well, Aww. some of them did. Are you getting a big head? Are you? A big head? Yeah. No. You're not? Why would I get a big head? Because they're all telling sending you love too. Well. <laughs> I appreciate the love. I appreciate the love. Yet again, I have not brought my actual bone folder in here. This guy has saved me in a pinch. Okay. I still from the cruise have not brought, brought my real bone folder back in. Let's start glitter glue this dude. Let's just glue this bad boy down. All right. All right. Glitter glue on the back. And then I'm going to show y'all what I did. I actually embossed the inside of the original card too. But for time's sake, I'm not. I showed you how to do all that embossing. You guys can get that done too, any old way you want to do it, anywhere you want to do it. That is beautiful. Now, because I used a black card base, I'm going to need to put a white base on the inside for writing because, you know, or you could write in a metallic pen, which would be really pretty in here. It'd be nice. Just look how pretty that is. Oh, I just got some more powder on it. I hate when I do that. Ugh. I'm telling y'all, I get dirty in the craft room, but, you know, it happens. All right, check this out. On the original one, I did this. So, celebrating the wonder of the greatest gift of all. Isn't that pretty? I did greatest gift of all in the copper, and I did this in the gold. And I was showing Mandy, and I think we could go all the way across, and it would be, pre it would be pretty too. So, that's the inside of the original. And this one is the one we did today. So. Well, we have another person that says I sound like Dr. Phil. We get emails about that too. <laughs> oh man, I'm dripping glue because I got a vacuum going on. This isn't for having anybody. Your bottle too I did, and I did it yesterday because I cleaned off my um, work surface and I cleaned off my glue tip and I put that on too tight. That's what I get. That is what I get. All right, any questions real quick before we go to I'm the crafter after show? Glitter glue getting wasted. You just have to loosen it. If it happens, just loosen it. Get that vacuum out of there. Put your lid back on. Put your cap on. And you're in good shape. Oh, uh, let's see. Mo most of the questions have been Vinny's Vittles related or store related. Because everybody's just been enjoying it. So. You guys, if you have some time, hang around for the Crafter After Show. We got some serious happy mail from people. We got some of the cutest stuff that was made for us. I can't wait to show y'all. The name of this stamp set is called Wonder. 
We have two new stamp sets. One is called Winter three. Wonderland. Three. I'm sorry. We have three. I'm going to show those in the next show. But this is the one I just used today. And all this wording can be used to work with your words in the middle. It's just beautiful. And this is a big set. This is a six by eight set, not a four by six. Love it. All right. Let's sign off from this one and let's head over to the Crafter After Show. And for those of you who don't know, the Crafter After Show is a show where we do, it's a little more lax, a little more laid back. We answer a lot more questions. We look at some stuff you guys sent us. We look at some stuff from the store that's new, all kinds of stuff. But before I go, very important. Next Thursday, our show will be called You Name It, okay? So what we're going to ask you to do is submit ideas for what you want to see me do off the cuff. I'm not going to prep for it. I'm not going to practice for it. It won't be a 20-minute video because can't prep and prep for a 20-minute uh, prep and practice for a 20-minute video if I don't know what I'm doing. But you guys will go to our Facebook group, which is called May May Made It, and so did I. This is the only place where we found we can run a poll with multiple options. So head to our Facebook group, May May Made It, and so did I. Next Wednesday, we will post a poll. That's exactly what I said, Angela. We will post a poll, and you will get to give suggestions for what you want to see me use. Now, here's the reason for this. We sell a lot of stuff in our store, and you guys send me message after message about show us how to use this product, show us how to use this product, you know. So and I'm thinking you can give. Hold on. I'm, sorry. I'm thinking you can give me ideas for what you want to see done with what products, and then I will use those products on the show based on what you're telling me you want to see done. It does, you know, you could say, "Hey, I want you to do the uh, twist and pop card with no prep." Fine, we can do that. Whatever you want me to do. You'll list it in the um, poll, so that'll go up next Wednesday, and you'll get to pick what is you name it Thursday. How cool. Go for it. It's taken care of. Oh, <laughs> never mind. It's done. All right, please like this video, share this video, um, subscribe to my channel, and stick around because we'll be back with another live, which is our Crafter After Show right after this. And if you make anything with this stamp set, we want to see it. Head over to our Facebook group. Head over to our Facebook pages. Head over to our website and join in on our customer gallery and show us what you're making. We'd love to see it. All right, we'll see you guys in just a few minutes for Crafter After. Talk to you soon.